the Bishop Canary Center this beautiful morning for this exciting announcement. Uh, I thank the members of the local media who are here. Um, I also welcome the priest and the pastoral center employees who have joined us. Uh, please keep in mind, um, with our other guests here, this is first of all a working press conference, so I ask you to allow the members of the media to do their job. There will be opportunities to meet Bishop Alec Malesic uh, later on. Uh, a couple of housekeeping items first. There's one restroom near the main entrance. The bigger restrooms are down this hall and downstairs. And there are refreshments in the back if you haven't, uh, if you haven't seen that. So Bishop Brandt, Bishop Alec Malesic. from the podium so we have the sound working well here. Sure. So. <laughs> honor and a privilege to be here on this historic day in the Diocese of Greensburg as we help announce the appointment of the fifth bishop of the diocese and he introduces himself to our diocese and the wider public. Due to our web and social media presence and with the web presence of the news media gathered here this is indeed a worldwide introduction also. I thank the members of the news media for your presence here, and I want to welcome also the priests, deacons, religious and pastoral center staff members who are with us. With gratitude to Almighty God and gratitude to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, we welcome our new Chief Shepherd, the very Reverend Edward C. Malesic, JCL, the, jurid the Judicial Vicar of the Diocese of Harrisburg and Pastor of Holy Infant Parish in York Haven. The appointment of Bishop elect uh, Malesic by our Holy Father, Pope Francis, was announced at six o'clock Eastern Daylight Time this morning at the Vatican, noon Vatican time. The appointment continues the apostolic succession of bishops as successors of the apostles, which started here with the formation of the Diocese of Greensburg on March 10th, 1951, and the appointment of Bishop Hugh L. Lamb as its first bishop. That apostolic succession has continued through Bishop William G. Kinnear, Bishop Anthony G. Bosco, and me, and will continue likewise through Bishop Elect Malesic. This is truly a joyous day for the Diocese of Greensburg as we celebrate that unbroken continuation of God's care for our diocese through Pope Francis, the 265th successor of St. Peter and shepherd of the Universal Church. We are deeply grateful for this providential sign of the Holy Father's solicitude for the Church of Greensburg in appointing Bishop-elect Malesic as our new chief shepherd. I personally have been deeply moved and impressed during my more than 11 years as Bishop of Greensburg by the faith of the Catholics in our four counties of southwestern Pennsylvania. I am confident that you, Bishop-elect Malesic, likewise, will find that this diocese and its people are exceptional in their commitment to their faith and their love of the Church. I know your new spiritual family will have a special place in their hearts for you. Bishop Alec Malesic, we welcome you with open arms and rejoice that it is you who have come to us. I assure you of our full support and cooperation and know that we accompany you with our prayers as you assume your new responsibilities. With great anticipation also, we look forward to the celebration of your Episcopal ordination and installation mass on Monday, July 13th at Blessed Sacrament Cathedral. And now it is a great pleasure for me to present to you all our Bishop-elect Edward C. Malesic. Good morning, everyone. 
morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is great to be here with you this morning, and, and thanks for coming. Last Monday, I was running a few errands at the parish, and in between, I was sitting at my, my desk. And the phone rang, and I saw the caller ID. It said, Vatican Embassy. <laughs> Doesn't usually call a holy infant parish here. <laughs> my stress level went up immediately, and the light started to blink on hold. My secretary came in and she said, there was a man who sounded Italian who was asking to speak with me. Did I know a Monsignor Vigano? They say that if you want to hear God laugh, tell him your plans. <laughs> and I had told my God my plans many times, what I wanted to do, when I wanted to do it, how I wanted to do it. And when I answered the phone that morning from Archbishop Vigano, I could hear God laughing in the background. The papal nuncio, Archbishop Vigano, was simple and direct. He said, Father, Pope Francis would like to appoint you as Bishop of Greensburg. Do you accept? And I admit it, I, I did take a while. <laughs> but in the end, I said that I, I trust the Lord. And I respect our Holy Father. And with great trepidation, I say yes. I'm reminded of a magnet I have on my filing cabinet in the tribunal that says leadership is the ability to hide your panic from others. <laughs> I don't think I've done a good job. <laughs> uh, I am both greatly honored and deeply humbled by the decision of our Holy Father Pope Francis to appoint me as the fifth bishop of the great diocese of Greensburg. This is an office that I never strove for, nor expected, thus my shock. But now that reality is setting in, I must thank God, who has blessed me so much in this life and in the priesthood. I love being a priest. I love being a priest. It has been quite a journey so far, and I suppose that there's more to come on this journey. And the people of Greensburg are going to be a huge part of my journey from now on. I'm grateful to Pope Francis for placing his confidence in me. I do not feel deserving of it, but I am accepting of it. I love Pope Francis. And the way he has asked all of us, <coughs> excuse me, he's asked all of us to examine and deepen our personal relationship with Jesus in a very simple way. You know, that personal relationship with Jesus is so critical to us as believers. I give him my loyalty and my devotion. Thank you, Bishop Grant, for welcoming me so warmly. When you called me last week, you told me that I am inheriting a gem of a diocese. I've heard that from so many other people, too. I, I know that you've worked hard to keep it sparkling during times of change. The Catholic community here owes you a great debt of gratitude. Thank you, Bishop Brand. When I first found out that I was coming here, I immediately Googled Greensburg. <laughs> and I learned that this is one of the top places to retire in Pennsylvania. <laughs> so you've chosen well to remain here with us. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that you'll be a source of wisdom and guidance as I learn how to be a bishop. And, and there's a learning curve here, folks, so <laughs> let me learn. <laughs> but you've been such a help, Bishop. Thank you so much. I want to thank Archbishop Vigano, the Apostolic Nuncio, who was so patient with me when he informed me of the Pope's decision several days ago, and he was left with utter silence <laughs> at the other end of the line. Archbishop Shafu. Our Metropolitan Archbishop has also been so kind to me, and my own Bishop Ronald Gaynor in Harrisburg has been extremely helpful during the early days of this massive transition for me in my life. I've only worked with Bishop Gaynor for 
about a year, and he's been a tremendous mentor for me. I just have to thank Monsignor Kulik, who let me stay at his house last night, the Vicar General, and he's been so gracious in letting me stay there. And this morning I was able to have Mass at the parish of St. James in New Alexandria, and, and uh, I, I just love being close to the people that way. The people of the Diocese of Harrisburg have formed me in my faith from my early childhood and throughout my priesthood. Each and every parish and community that I have lived in and served has taught me something more about what it means to be a Christian, and I'm grateful. I especially want to thank the tribunal staff of Harrisburg and the staff and people of Holy Infant Parish in York Haven, the place where I have served as pastor for the past 11 years. I will need them more now than ever over these next few weeks, and I promise to bring something back from them, some Pittsburgh Steelers memorabilia, <laughs> perhaps even a terrible towel or two. And finally, I thank my parents who gave me life and passed the Catholic faith on to me, even when I gave them a hard time about it as a teenager. Thanks for not giving up. I come to Greensburg as a stranger. But Greensburg is not completely unfamiliar to me. I've spent some time here for a few annu annual retreats at St. Vincent's Arch Abbey and St. Emma's Monastery. I guess that's a good thing, isn't it? <laughs> I actually pray and go and retreat. I know that these and other religious communities will be a great spiritual treasure for me moving forward. I've done a bit of reading about the diocese in the last several days, and I already get the sense that this church is blessed with great Catholic institutions and great people. Hard-working priests, deacons, religious men and women, and laity who are generous in every way possible. People of deep, deep faith. That encourages me. You will be my needed collaborators. Together we will work to build up the kingdom of God in our diocese. Now you're most likely wondering, who is this guy from Harrisburg? I'm sure that my name has been Googled more than once this morning. <laughs> Just like I Googled Greensburg. In short, as Pope Francis said of himself, I too am a fellow sinner. But because I'm a fellow believer, I have also received the mercy of God. I want to proclaim that God is good. With God, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I'm very much looking forward to celebrating the upcoming Jubilee Year of Mercy recently announced by Pope Francis. Plain and simple, I am a disciple of Jesus. I believe that he gives life, and I believe that he gives peace. I believe that he founded the Catholic Church I love so much. I believe that he is with us now, and in a special way, he is sending the Holy Spirit upon us to create us anew. He is the source of my joy. My Episcopal motto, my Episcopal motto, which comes from the beginning of Psalm 100, is a reflection of the joy that we should have in the Lord. It will be, serve the Lord with gladness. You are also as unknown to me as I am to you. But I know that people are inherently good, that if you love them, they will normally love you back, and if you challenge them, they are often up to the challenge. I believe that there are people with deep faith everywhere, and I do expect to find great faith within the four counties that make up the Diocese of Greensburg, just as I have found it over and over again in the Diocese of Harrisburg. Over time, we will get to know each other better. I believe that we can learn from each other, listen to each other, and have the respect for one another that comes from the dignity that each and every human being has from conception until natural death. I look forward to working together with all of you and to continue the ongoing work of the new evangelization, so important for our church. With God's help, we will do good things together to build up God's kingdom in this part of his earth and to serve the needs of the most vulnerable among us, especially the poor and the poor in spirit.
please be patient with me as I find my way around and as I discover more of the strengths and the challenges of this local church. You will soon begin to learn my strengths and limitations too. Please pray for me. I promise to pray for you. Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Thank you. now is take any questions from the assembled media and if you can introduce yourself as you ask questions especially for Bishop elect who is going to be learning a lot of names and faces Anybody? Uh, Bishop elect I'm Peter Smith with the Pittsburgh Post Gazette uh, welcome and congratulations um, you said you're just beginning to learn about the Diocese of Greensburg but I, I'm sure you know there's been some contraction here, a lot of parish closings, um, and some discontent about that. Can you, do you foresee more such contraction taking place, and uh, how, how will you address the issues of changing demographics? Why don't you come up with uh, I, I do know of, of that, of the, uh, the mergers of several parishes. Um, I looked at the demographics of, of the counties, and, and you can see that there are certain counties that are, are losing populations. Obviously, that, that calls uh, for some creativity in the future. I have no idea uh, at this point uh, whether there would be any need to, to merge any future parishes. I think Bishop Grant has, has done um, an excellent job of setting this diocese up for the future, and I just plan to work with that. And uh, I'm too new to even say anything, but uh, don't expect any great changes from me anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bishop elect Joe Holden from Channel 11. Um, so you've been appointed, uh, you've, you've told family, you've gone through this press conference. How do you start day one as a bishop? <laughs> <laughs> I just I want to say, I did talk to my father this morning, and, uh, and, he, and my dad is 97 years old. And uh, still driving, so beware. <laughs> I told him he can't drive out here, so you're safe. Um, and he was happy for me, but he, his first question was, do, I, do you get a raise? <laughs> do I? <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the furthest thing from my mind. You know, how do you start day one? It's like any, any new position, you kind of read about the place, you try and talk to people, like this morning after Mass I talked to the people at St. James, you just try and get a feel for it, you try and learn what the, the structure of the diocese is, and that's the bones in my mind upon which the flesh of the faith is built, and you try and, and build on that, and try and proclaim Jesus wherever I go, whether I'm here or in Harrisburg. Um, it's just a matter of uh, a lot of patience, taking a lot of time to learn and listen, and, uh, and taking a lot of things to prayer. I have a lot of people praying for me this morning. A lot of people. That's, that's how you do it. I have a lot of people praying for you. Anybody else with a question? Kim. Yes, I'm Kim Metzger from St. Vincent. And just wondered, uh, you have a lot of experience with campus ministry in the Diocese I of do. Harrisburg. I do. And what are your thoughts coming uh, to the Diocese of Greensburg, where we have several universities and colleges and a seminary? Mm -hmm. um, campus ministry has been a huge part of my life. Uh, uh, from early on, your College of Pennsylvania, Millersville University, Franklin and Marshall College, um, Messiah College, and uh, uh, my thoughts are to, to find out what is going on. I, I really don't know too much of what's going on. I know a little bit of what's going on at St. Vincent's because I spent some time there, and it seems like they have a great program uh, just to encourage the campus ministers to continue to um, promote the church on campus and bring the, the students together where they can experience a, a, um, the church at its best, the church at its best. And, and I think that's what I try to do in campus ministry. You bring the students together and you just say this is the best uh, church that we, we can give to you and you can even make it better by participating in it. 
give them some ownership of the church. Is there, can we ask Bishop Brandt a question? Yeah. Could you come up to the podium? Sure. <laughs> I really think you're, addre I think you're addressing your uh, questions to, to the wrong person, perhaps. Bishop uh, elect me, we ask Bishop Brandt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you make a forward. <laughs> So Bishop, after 11 years leading the diocese, uh, there's been praise and there's been criticism. How do you sum up 11 years of uh, leading the church here? When I have gone about the diocese installing pastors on another occasions, and just last night at the wonderful uh, Salt and Light dinner, I concluded by saying, and I have repeated this, I repeat it because I mean it, I have been truly blessed to be your bishop truly have. Uh, as I mentioned in my remarks, I have experienced so much goodness, so much uh, help really in, in uh, my absolving my own responsibilities as the Chief Shepherd that it has touched me deeply. The depth of the faith, the commitment to the Church, the love of the Church in this diocese is exceptional. I've been many places, I've been around the block many times, and I when I come back, I always thank the Lord that I have been here as, as the shepherd and been among you and that you have been part of my life. I do mean that. Thank you. see anybody else with a hand up I think this Peter no I'll, I'll ask one more uh, Bishop elected I don't know if you'll want to answer this but why do you think you were chosen <laughs> <laughs> um, I have no idea <laughs> in many ways I mean I, I and I've asked um, uh, looked at myself and I, I guess <clears throat> I've had a lot of experiences in life that have come to me that, that might uh, help with the, the qualities the Holy Father was looking in for a shepherd uh, for the Diocese of Greensburg. Uh, campus ministry would be one, um, being a pastor another. I, I do have a degree in, in canon law that does not make me a bad person. Just, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I tell Kendall all jokes just like everyone else. <laughs> and, uh, um, uh, maybe you'll need, you'll, you can answer that in a year from now. But uh, yeah, I, I just see myself, I personally, personally, see myself as a simple parish priest. That's all I've ever seen myself as, but I've been given great opportunities to um, broaden my understanding of what it means to be church. Father Boniface from St. Vincent and also with We Are One Body Radio. And I uh, wonder if you could just share, you, we, we just spoke about the strength of your experience in campus ministry and you mentioned opportunities in general. Can you speak to some of the strengths that you hope to bring to the Greensburg Diocese? Sure. By the way, just, uh, just before I answer that, I, uh, at a side, I had uh, a student who is a, a great student of mine at Millersville University um, emailed me today, and I haven't seen her for 15 years, and she has a young child, and she said, could I stop by Holy Infant this morning to see you because we're passing through. I'd love to show you my child. I said, unfortunately, I'll be in Greensburg for something else. <laughs> Um, I, you know, I, what am I, the question was again, what do I bring to this? I, I hope I'm a good listener. I hope I'm compassionate. I hope I'm loving. I hope I'm joyful. I hope I'm faithful. You know, those are the things that I, I think every person should bring to everything they do. You know, be hopeful, be faithful, be joyful, you know, be loving, be kind. If we would all do that, the world would be a much better place. Okay, thank you. What we're, we're going to do now is allow members of the press maybe some one-on-one -on -one time. So, 
know, if anybody, you know, needs to, wants to stay and get something. I know some of you are getting ready for noon news, so I'll, I'll try to do a little priority. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for attending. Uh, great day. Um, it'll, you know, as we move toward July 13th, uh, we'll definitely be looking forward to that. So thank you again for your attendance.